Oh, we might have a troll. What's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business with Jay and Nay. I'm your one host, Vegas Jay. And I'm your other host, Philly Nay. And this is our guest tonight, Stacy. And Stacy, oh, where's Stacy? She's right. I see her. Is she Weird. When I, when I click on her, I don't see her. Hey, Stacy, are you there? I think she froze. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Our guest is frozen. How, how is that for crappy timing? The guest froze right as we went to air. Hey, uh, Stacy, drop out and come back in, please. So while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll get right to it, shall we? Yes. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Oh, I think Stacy's back. Cool. All right, we'll talk to her in a quick sec. Each week, I drink a different rum. I have a different tiki mug and give you a little education in the process. And I somehow try and match one or both with our guest. And so tonight, of course, we're going to go with greens. St. Patty's Day is coming up uh, tomorrow. I pulled out my Boba Fett mug to titillate the Tiki fans and the Geek fans and the Star Wars nerds, which I am all three of. That is a cool mug. And now that our guest is back, hey, Stacy, I meant to ask you before we went to air, how do you pronounce your last name properly? Oh, what is going on? <laughs> What is going on? Hey, say your computer worked fine until we went to air. What is happening? All right, back to me. So, since Stacy's frozen again, uh, Stacy spells her name the exact same way as my wife, the proper way S T A C I. <laughs> and Stacy's from Illinois and didn't have any Illinois rum. But so, what I decided, because I thought this was kind of smart of me, Nadine, I picked my Stacy's favorite rum. See what I did? Okay. There? So, if you want to get into rum and you want something nice, this is what you should start with. It's called Rama Tuzlum Grand Reserve and Reserva. And uh, it is a very nice, even balanced rum. It's a little bit higher priced than like your entry level Bacardi or Malibu, but it's not crazy expensive. This bottle is 32 bucks. At least here it is. Might be more expensive in places like Ohio, but this is a really nice, doesn't taste oaky. It doesn't taste like gasoline. This is a really, really nice rum. And that's why my wife loves it so much. And so this is her favorite. So I thought I would drink her favorite tonight since we have, I have two Stacy's in my life. Yes, All right. I'll correctly. So I'm going to um, hijack your, your uh, Tiki talk with um, some Irish Guinness talk. So I'm wearing my Guinness shirt that Jason actually thrifted for me a couple years ago, right? This was, yeah. So, um, so I have my Guinness shirt on and. I am so I'm drinking out of my favorite thrifted Guinness glass, and this is uh, Guinness in my glass. And I'm just going to give you a quick education about Guinness because um, I am half Irish, and I love uh, I love Guinness. I, I like the stout beers. So this is Guinness Foreign Extra, which is a little extra. They have it's extra hops. It's a little bolder and more stout and bitter, which Jason would say ew too, but. I say yum too. And then this is the regular, um, this is the regular traditional um, extra stout um, Guinness, which is also very good. But the other one is actually my favorite, the far and extra. And um, my other, I also like Murphy's Irish stout, but um, it's a little bit about Guinness and uh, it is my favorite beverage. Alcoholic beverage, <laughs> <laughs> not beverage. Uh, who needs need yeah. water? I <laughs> no. got Guinness. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, cheers. Cheers. And happy St. Patty's Day. Hey, there's the luck of the Irish. Yes. All right, Stacy. Let's try a third time. Hey, Stacy, how are you? Uh-oh, she's still frozen. Oh, no, this is going to be a quick show tonight. All right, Stacey, if you can hear us, what I want you to do is reboot your whole computer and then come back in, and we'll see you when you do. Now, real quick before we get to our scores of the week, are you ready for your get-the-hell-out-of-here moment of the week? I went downstairs at 4.55 today to figure out which rum I was going to drink and which tiki mug. Now, you may ask yourself, hey, Jay, how'd you know it was 4.55? Because I looked at my watch. And I want to make sure, because Nay, Nay and I get together at 5 o'clock. So I'm like, oh, what time is it? Oh, 
I'm going to go downstairs, take out my mug, take out my rum. I walked around the shelves, looked for green, and I settled on my Star Wars. And I have many, many Star Wars mugs, two are green, Yoda and Boba Fett. And I'm like, I'm a Boba Fett fan through and through. So I'm going to pick Boba Fett at 4.57. So about the time I was grabbing Boba Fett, I got a picture sent to me from one of our fans, Nadine, who lives in Canada. Are you ready for this, folks? This will blow your mind. This is the picture he sent me when I was touching it. He sees the tiki mugs from Star Wars someplace as I'm grabbing a mug and sends me a picture, and that's Boba Fett right in the middle there. So there is the crazy, the world works in mysterious circles moment of the day. Yeah, so that's like a tiki encounter, I guess. <laughs> so thank you, Evan. Uh, yeah, that is a tiki encounter at 4.57 today. Isn't that wow. crazy? That is crazy. All right, Stacy, are you there? Yes, I don't know what's going on. It kept freezing up. All right, Stacey, how do you pronounce your last name properly? Demir. Demir. All right. Cool. So there's Stacy. She spells it correctly. So that's always a bonus. And yeah. we'll see her in a little bit. So we'll put her to sleep and we'll cross our fingers that she's there when we get back to her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see you a little bit, Stace. All right. Now it is time for. Nay's breast cancer update and fact of the week. Yeah, so I'm dealing with some extra fatigue this week. I'm getting some tests done, and they're trying to figure all that out. But um, it's been really, like, especially today, it was really debilitating. But I'm still hanging in there. I'm here, um, so which is a good thing. And um, I just wanted to thank some of our viewers because Linda sent me these two awesome hats, which are cool. you'll like this one because it's camo. And uh, our viewer Jamie sent me um, some awesome breast cancer logo. Uh, athletic pants a couple weeks ago, which I, I, um, and anybody who has sent me cards and even, you know, just online, uh, the support, the, the, you know, it's really helpful. And I just want to thank everyone. I don't always get to, um, thank everyone personally right away, but I just wanted to say thank you for the support and the love. And, um, and then my little cancer, um, mem there is that cancer messed with the wrong girl. So that's kind of how I felt like the beginning of the week, I was kind of depressed and I was just tired. And, um, and now today I'm just kind of like, you know what, I'm just, I'm tired of it. <laughs> so I have my, uh, my boxing gloves back on and I'm, you know, I'm up for the fight. So a little, teen, um, little teeny boxing glove, little teeny. Yeah. My little teeny box. I want to get some real full size ones someday. In the pink, but well, they weren't pink. They weren't pink, but those ones I had you put on that one day. I pictures. know, I remember that. Yeah, I was like, That's "Hey, Nadine, stick your hands into these yeah. used, probably sweaty." I bodies. was like, "Okay, sure." Put a picture. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's get to our scores, shall we? Mm -hmm. Time for our scores of the week, where Nay and I share with you some of the best stuff we sold this week. Usually, they're bolos, be on the lookouts, brands, items, things you should look for to add to your bottom line to make more money. All right, so some of you who are in the thrifting board uh, saw this. And if you're not in the thrifting board, there's a link right below here to join if you'd like to join us. Uh, but uh, tiki mugs do not have to be big to be worth a lot of money. Uh, and to show you how small this one is, here's me holding it. So here's me holding a full-size tiki mug. And then here's me holding a little itty-bitty tiki mug. So I sold that for $50. Wow. I think I paid 10 for it like 10 years ago, too. So very yes. limited edition, little tiny mug made by the uh, manufacturer Monk Tiki. Which and they're funny. highly, highly collectible. So if you find any Monk Tiki mugs, you are doing good. Uh, I have sold two oh. of these banks from the from 1971. This brown one sold for 42 bucks. I had an orange one, the exact same bank, but in orange, sold for like 55. So the orange sells for more than the brown. But if you see this bank, and it sells usually quick, and it's an easy thing to sell. People love, love, love this bank. Oh, I shared this uh, in my groups. Yeah, uh, I this, remember Ween. Yeah, so Ween and is cheese a band and I, cheese and chocolate. Yeah, Ween's a band I hate, but I do know them because I'm a music nerd, and I knew that even though this was an advanced promo of the Mollusk, this was a different uh, on the actual album. So collectors will go after. It, it'll be the exact same music, but the fact that it had a different cover, collectors will go after that. So I paid two bucks, and I sold for twenty three ninety nine. 
And then funny enough, one day Nadine sent me a picture of her sales for the day and I had a shitty day so far. I was actually standing out back with my dog. I was talking to I Nadine. Remember. She was sending me a picture. Look how much I sold. And I didn't sold anything. And two seconds later, chit-ching, I sold this $72 Tiki mug. So, yeah, it was, that was crazy timing. If you have not looked at Tiki mugs yet, you are not listening to me. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay, so this, uh, this since, and I just got positive feedback for this today too, so they were happy with it. Now, I spent $2.99 for this shower curtain at Goodwill. It had the packaging on it, I mean, the, the cardboard, and it was newly factory folded, new old stock, didn't have the plastic on it um, anymore. I saw that there was a Kmart price tag. Um, it was from, uh, I forget what, uh, 2005. Okay, it's right in my title there. And it was $14.99 originally at Kmart. And I looked it up and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find any sold. So I was like, I can price it at whatever I want. There's gonna be a Simpsons fan out there who's gonna want that shower curtain. And sure enough, I put it up for $99.99, which I didn't think I was gonna get that much. But um, I got an offer for 60 and I was like, I'll take it. So Simpsons nice. uh, vinyl shower curtain sold for $60. The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. So and, singing too, that'd be fun. And this actually went locally to somebody in Philadelphia, like a couple streets over. I was like, you know, it's, it's funny. And you, and you sourced it a couple streets the other way, probably. Yes, right? I did, which is really funny. Yeah. That's I the sourced best thing. it that's right so in their funny. backyard. And uh, so that sold this, this book set sold for $50 um, with free shipping, but um, I sent it a couple street over streets over media mail. So it didn't cost anything to ship. And um, it was, um, this is a, it's a kind of a, a collector's edition of this, of this specific uh, series. It's kind of one of those Fantasia kind of uh, series of, of books. So I knew when I saw that right away, uh, because I am a book nerd, I knew right away when I saw that at Goodwill for, I think, four ninety nine. I knew to grab it. So, and sure enough, it sold for forty nine ninety five. So, and... Going back to my shower curtain. Well, so, uh, somebody was asking if you oh. left the Kmart tag on it. So no, like, actually, oh. I did take off the Kmart tag. Now, now right. my rule is, is, is something is very vintage and it has an old, but for yes. 2005, yeah. no, I, I took that off. So, um, and these Nick and Nora uh, slippers that I paid, I think, a dollar ninety nine for. They were old tar Target. They were Target salvage, and I I bought them. It took me a while to get them listed. I finally listed them, twenty four ninety nine with free shipping, and um, you know they were lightweight to ship, so that was a, a decent sale. And oh, this was a this was a real good. This was a great one. This um, I was digging through. I was actually shopping with my friend Lola at um, one of our thrift stores, and I was in. Um, there was this big bin of like tote bags, and there was just junky like. Um, just junky kids bags and all kinds of in there. And I saw this, this really nice buttery leather sticking out and I grabbed it and sure enough, it was a, it, it was a next to new uh, Cole Haan leather metallic tote bag. And it was in really great condition. It just had like a little flaw in the bottom, like somewhere on the bottom, but it was the inside was nice and clean. So I got an offer for $60 and I accepted that and I was happy with that. I paid, um, I paid nine ninety nine for it, but I think it was actually on sale that day. So, all right, those are our scores of the week. Now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. I'm gonna have Nago first. Okay, so this one I thought would sell well, um, and that's not the actual selling price there. It, it sold for twenty dollars oh. with free shipping. Oops. Yeah, so that was Neiman Marcus is a great brand. It was vintage. It still had the tag on it, so that it was it was new old stock. I thought that this was gonna kill it for more than twenty nine ninety nine, but I actually dropped the price on it. Didn't sell it twenty nine ninety nine. So and it sat for a long time, and I finally got an offer for twenty dollars, and I accepted it. So you never know. Um, sometimes you think something's gonna do well, it doesn't. And then here's another dud pattern four ninety nine with free shipping. <laughs> really not worth it, but Don't I do get these. Those things, I do get these. I get these in in big bulk. Um, so but still, four nine nine free shipping. You've lost money. I know. Now with the well, it used to be with um, you know before the USPS hike went up for the first class. Right. So get rid of those. But no now, more. yeah, absolutely agreed. Group them up. All right. One thing I always say is when you're selling, um, 
uh, superhero things. There is money to be made, but they got to be exciting. This one apparently wasn't because I had it for sale for three years and I just sold it for $9.99. So talk about losing money <laughs> and taking up space. But my bigger dud is here in person tonight. I bought this for $7.50 at Savers. I thought this will do great. It's animatronic. Here's the problem. I didn't do this at the thrift store. Because if I would have done this at the thrift store, I would have noticed how rotten and corroded the battery oh. terminals are. And it leaked so bad. You see the juice there, Nadine? Mm -hmm. Is it in the box? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the bottom of the box there, too. Oh, no. Yeah, so that's a, that's a big 750 wasted. Make sure if you're buying something with batteries, you check the battery compartment before you waste seven dollars and fifty cents. Now you can Boom. clean out that corrosion. I've done it before on items. And yeah, I know, but and I probably will try and salvage my money. But I'm like, ugh, what a mess. I, I would have left it behind. It's not worth oh, absolutely, that much yeah, to but, deal with it. Yeah, agreed. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a dork. Alrighty. Well, we know that. Now it's time for Close Encounters of the Thrifty Kind, Kind, Kind. Nay and I recount uh, stories of people we run into in the thrift stores. Weird, odd, aggressive, as in last week with me. And this week is the exact opposite. My last few weeks have been oh. aggression and weird and just, ugh. but this was amazing. So I was in Savers on Tropicana, and I actually saw this nice lady kind of stalking me like a tiger in the, in the grass, <laughs> in the high grass. Because I could see she, I had my headphones in, I was listening to a podcast, and she finally approached me and said, excuse me, and I took my headphones off, and I said, yeah, she goes, um, I, I met you before here, and you're so nice, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. She said, all right, I'm ready to take the plunge. I've signed up for eBay, I've signed up for PayPal, should I do buy it now or auction? <laughs> and I said, oh, unless you got something that people are really going to fight over, everything's buy it now. She's like, oh, thank you very much. Thanks for being so sweet. And we went about our way. And I, at the time, didn't take her picture. And I, I should have because I'm like, oh, I had a nice thrifty encounter. I never take pictures. She found me later. And I thought she left because I was actually looking for her. She found me later. And she goes, can I ask you one more question? I said, yes, if I can take your picture. And I, and I did tell her why. So it didn't seem so creepy. Um, but she said, uh, do I pay the extra 30 cents to make my pictures bigger? And I said, no, no, don't worry about that. But here's what's the most pleasant thing about it. Her name is Beverly. So Beverly, if you're watching, hello. Thanks. For, nice to see you again. She's a child's entertainer here in town. Like she does like story time at this outdoor oh. mall where she talks to the kids. So her speaking voice is just so pleasant and sweet. The exact opposite of the guy who told me to F off last week. So it was such a nice thrifty <sighs> encounter. And she wants to get going on eBay. So I, I invited her to the thrifting board, told her to watch our show. And she was a big fan of Thrift Hunters. And that's why she knew me. So that's why she said hi. So if you're watching Beverly, good to see you. Hope to see you again soon at, at Savers. Awesome. So mine is also a happy uh, thrifty um, encounter. So we were, uh, my friend Lola and I were scouting. Uh, she was, she went with me to scout some stores for our upcoming, uh, thrifting classes on, uh, well, on April 12th, I was looking for some, a store specific, great store, which we found. And, um, we went, we stopped at the, we hit the bins after and I, and I met our, my friend Yvonne there, who is from the thrifting board. Yvonne Johnson, if you're watching, hi. And uh, that's that's Yvonne, and she found, these are two of the things that she happened to find in the bin. She found that crazy, crazy um, Barbie doll with the crazy hair that, and and a New Jersey license plate randomly. So we- Is that were, Justin, hey, is that Justin Guarini? It might doll? be, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it was a crazy Barbie doll, and it was- it sure is. Yeah, so those are two crazy things that we found, and there's Yvonne, and uh, she is awesome at the bins, I'll tell you. She she knows how to work the bins, so. And how crazy, in the same week, our Thrifty Encounters were a nice encounter. Yes. That, that never really yes. happens to us all that often. <laughs> all right, now it's time for our Thrifty Tips of the Week, and this segment is brought to you by Stamps.com, postage on demand. Stamps.com's online posted service enables small businesses, enterprises, and online retailers like me, you, and Nadine to print U.S. Postal Service approved postage, postage with just a computer, printer, and internet connection right from their home or office. And I use it every single day. I shipped a tiki mug to Canada today, a little trade I did. 
So I use my stamps to get it out of here. I love stamps.com. So thank you for sponsoring us, stamps. Yes. And here is Nadine's tip. So when something that's vintage looks like it's new old stock and it's something that you would want to buy because it's a good price and it's sitting there on the shelf in the new old stock condition in the box, like these ice skates, uh, always, you know, be a little wary and look for further damage because they might've been sitting in someone's basement or attic for years where, um, <clears throat> they, you know, got some moisture in them and, uh, there's this phenomenon called dry rot, which you can see in that foamy kind of um, lining in the on the insole there on the top right, and it literally just disintegrates. And it, it's just like when I opened up the the ice skates, I could see the tongue, like the the lining was just everywhere. So that is something that you don't want to buy. Um, so yeah. always watch for that. <laughs> that happens. Yeah, that also happens. That can happen in clothing and purses and shoes commonly. So anything vintage like that, always look out for that kind of deterioration all right and my thrifty tip of the week is uh, look we all we all kind of live and work online youtube facebook instagram put out to the world especially to your friends what you like you uh, i would get i get uh, messages every day about tiki mugs some for help and others for like hey jay you need this for your collection so because i have many times put out to the world and weekly what i like People will message me and, hey, Jay, you need this, you need that. That helps in finding cool things to flip if, you're, if your friends aren't sellers or just for your collection. So this week is because I put myself out there and people know my love of creepy clown things. Uh, thanks to my friend, Kari. What's up, Kari? She was in a music store, I think in Palm Springs, and found this epicness. Oh, that is creepy. Yeah, how's that for creepy? Hello, little boy. Would you like to sit on my lap? Wow. So uh, always put it out there. Don't be shy. If you're using if you're using social media for anything, let your friends know what you like because you never know when your friends are going to be standing someplace and find a creepy clown record for you. Now, this is just to keep personal, but I do get a lot of things, too, from friends who aren't sellers that are just shopping for themselves, finding things for me to sell, and sometimes we split the money if it's a big item. So put yourself out there. So that is my tip of, yeah, holy nightmare. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I'll show it one more time. Yeah, oh, yeah that is creepy. Show the back cover. Uh, it's not as creepy. Oh, but wait, there is one creepy clown right there. Oh, that's a really creepy one. Yeah, but look, yeah. it opens up. Da, 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 da. It's like the circus, see? Oh, I don't like that but one. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> that's the but, stuff nightmares is made, are made out of, yes. <laughs> Treasure State Toy said ghosts run away from clowns. Yeah, that's how creepy clowns are. And I'm not even <laughs> creeped out by clowns, but that's creepy. <laughs> All right, now it's time for... <laughs> You have got to be shipping me where Nay and I give you tips and tricks on what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. This segment is brought to you by BubbleFast, a family-owned business providing quality shipping supplies to the online community since 1999. BubbleFast, the internet's home for shipping supplies. And if you use our code JNA, right like you see there, J-A-Y-N-A-N-D-N-A-Y, you get 10% off your entire order at all times so make sure you use it i forgot to use our own code every once in a while and mark from bubble fast will message me and just call me an idiot and i'm like oh did i forget my own discount <laughs> like, ay, ay, ay. that's funny so uh am I, oh i'm starting with my tip okay so uh this i'm going back to the cole Haan bag that i sold and i usually will not recommend shipping using a shoe box to ship because shoe boxes are flimsier and they're not really proper shipping boxes however when you have something like a big uh, tote bag like this now i could have bubbled it you know put some tissue around it and stuck it in a poly and it would have gotten there safely but for a 60 dollars bag it needs a little bit more but it doesn't really need a thick heavy box that's going to add weight so i happen to have a pair of boots upstairs that were still still in their box i was storing them in there and i was like oh perfect so i took my boots out of the box and i used the boot box and it actually fit perfectly I didn't have to fold because with a leather bag like this you don't want to fold that because that can crease the leather so it laid perfectly in the shoe box and it was just enough um, just enough to give it a little extra something to ship and I just taped it and off it went so cool all right and mine's actually here in my hand uh, I, I I'm a nerd for shipping and I always have like a favorite box the shoe box the the Used to be my favorite box. No longer. I have a new favorite box, ladies and gentlemen. It is the eBay 12 by 6 by 6 
This is the okay. Mac Daddy box. I've been selling a lot of Tiki mugs internationally. And so this is perfect. It's the perfect depth. And it's, since it's a long box, it is the perfect length to put a Tiki mug in. And so the little bonus tip is if you have an eBay store and you've not used your first quarter coupon, it expires in two weeks. And U2's coupon starts in two weeks and a day. So make sure you use it. And if you have not bought any 12 by 6 by 6s this is a great box, especially if you're selling mugs, glassware that is long like this. It is the perfect, perfect box. It is a great thickness for stability, but it's not too thick, so it saves a little bit on weight. Yeah. I have to order my supplies. Thank you for the reminder. Yes. All right, so now it is time for... Our viewers, two-minute topic of the week. And this week, our question is brought to us... Brought, blah, 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 brought to us by Cheryl Bullard Boots. Cheryl wants to know, <clears throat> with thrift stores raising their prices, do you have suggestions for alternatives? Would you ask family for things to sell that they no longer want or use without consigning? And our two-minute topic of the week is brought to you by Free Up Commerce, the hands-on hiring platform for pre-vetted e-commerce workers. Free Up with three E's is the hands-on solution to hiring remote e-commerce workers. Free Up vets hundreds of workers a week, so you get access to the top 1% of online talent whenever you need them. Sign up is free, no monthly fees, no minimum hours. Get the workers you need when you need them and only pay for the hours they work. Brenda, a loyal listener of our show, a loyal viewer of our show, heard Nate when he was on the show and is now on her way to building a remote empire with her team of free up workers. Go to freeup.com with three E's to start to free up your time and scale your business. All right, let me get my, uh, uh, well, oh, okay. Uh, no, no, no timer tonight. I didn't have it ready. I'll keep my eye on it though. <laughs> I'll hold it. There we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll hold it. So you are up first. I'll put you on the screen and you're off. Whoops. Okay. So thrift stores raising their prices really doesn't affect me because there's always something to be found in at the thrift store, no matter what. Just this, uh, just recently I, um, found, you know, they have that bo the boutique section and it's usually like new with tags. Some of it's Walmart new with tags. Some of it, some of it is good brand names that they've caught onto, but you're always going to find something. I found a Lululemon or Lululemon, however you want to pronounce that, new with tags hoodie for four ninety nine this uh, recently, and that hoodie is um, resale value is one twenty five. So you never know. So while they're pricing other things higher, there's always something else. And do I ask family members and go to? Yeah, there's there's all kinds of other sources. There's um, there's garage sales. There's other stores. There's consignment shops. And yeah, sometimes I mean my parents sometimes like they gave me one of those space maker coffee makers and they were just like, here you want to sell it? And I sold it for two fifty. So um, yeah, of course, like I'll take things from family members too. But um, there you go. That's that one minute. <laughs> I, I sipped water and I'm choking. Oh my gosh, I know. You're <laughs> not rum. Uh, the water made me choke. All right. Oh my. Here we go. <laughs> uh, I too don't think that uh, thrift stores are raising their prices out of our range. Look, we we want to make money. They want to make money. It is a circle that we all have to live in. So I'm, I'm not mad at anyone making money. And when I see people get mad, it boggles my mind because our job is to make the most money from the items they thrift. We thrift. And so the thrift store's job is to make the most money for the items they get. But I still leave every thrift store with baskets full of stuff. And if you live near a savers right now, it's punch card time. So if you always have a full punch card, it's 30% off of your entire order. So if you, if you feel the thrift store is overpriced by, say, 20 25%, if you've always got 30% off, oh, I'm so burpy, then you'll be good. So keep that in mind. As far as asking friends and family, anytime I go to a friends and family's house, I'm looking around their house. I'm like, hey, you want to sell this? I'm always looking for goodies in their house to sell. So I am never ashamed to ask if they want to sell something. So have at it for sure. That was good. Hmm, sorry about all the burps there. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Yeah, right in the middle. I'm burpy. Yes, you are. Okay, <sighs> now it's time for... Lord. There we go. <laughs> thrift up your life. Do not forget when you're in the thrift store to keep your eyes up for things you can just use. Like we all go there to buy things to flip, 
but there's always good stuff you can use in the thrift store. Personal use, that is. Yes. So I took pictures for this, uh, and I figured I might as well use them for something because I, I thrifted these awesome shoes. They were like new condition, and they happened to be my large size, and they fit perfectly, <laughs> and they were so cute. And I, I was going to list them, and I looked at the resale value, and I paid four ninety nine, and they were going to go for maybe twenty twenty five at the most. And I actually said to Jason, I was like, what do you think? Can I keep these? And he was like, go ahead and keep them. And I knew that he's like my voice of reason. So I knew if he was saying, keep them then, and look at, look how awesome they are, Jason. So those are going to be, um, if I make it to Vegas this summer, those are going to look really cute with a Hawaiian dress. And I also have my thrifted Guinness glass here. So I, I will say Nadine, you know, your life's effed up if I'm the voice of reason. Well, <laughs> yeah, actually you, you are know. though. You, you yeah, know, so. the You're voice right. of reason. <laughs> and you are usually my voice of reason. So all right, so here's the item I bought this week. And tell me what you think of this, Nadine. Oh. Ooh, Def Leppard. Ooh, Joe Elliott. Nice. Okay. So, like chat, what do you think of this T-shirt? I actually bought it for a very specific reason, and it wasn't to wear, and it wasn't that, to sell. Was that, is that Hysteria, or? No. No. Yeah. It is, yeah, it was their covers album, I think. Okay. All right, so I will sh I will tell you why I bought this. And I actually bought it for all of you, and I spent more than I should have. I spent uh, $4.90. Let me show you the back of this Def Leppard t-shirt, AD, and then you can tell me what's going on here. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um. How do we have two bands on this? Yeah, exactly. Debbie Weeder got it. Fake. Yep. Yeah, what not to do. So I love, 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 love buying fake concert shirts to teach people. I, I've had, I have a speech I can give to like meetups and stuff. I've written articles. Matter of fact, here's my article. It's easy to find. Actually, I put it down below in the links, but oh. on the Worth Point website, leave it on the rack, how to spot a fake rock shirt. So I love, 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 spending my hard-earned money on fake shirts so I can teach you guys what not to buy. And what's going on here, if you could see it really well, is somebody took the graphic and then Photoshopped it. The journey side's not too bad, but but the, the guys in Def Leppard are blown out. Yeah. That's... And and what happened was, they I think they did some shows together. Major acts will never, ever share a shirt. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes lesser acts will go on tour together. So you may see like Fog Hat and Kansas and Foreigner, and they might have a group shirt, but but Def Leppard is not in that category. Def Leppard is still an arena filler. Journey is still an arena filler. They would never, ever share a shirt. So my my item I bought this week for personal use is this to teach you guys what not to do. So this is kind of funny, just really, really quick here. There's actually two weird things going on here. First of all, when you see my mini haul, you'll see how we're – we're oddly same brain tonight. And the other thing is, uh, ironically, this past week, Def Leppard happens to be one of the, actually probably the only like metal, that kind of genre band that I actually like. And I was into them in the 90s. I was more into alternative and not metal like that. But I just thrifted a Def Leppard uh, like greatest hits CD for a dollar. And that's my car music right now. So that's pretty funny. All right, and then last segment before we get our guest in here. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Tip your waitress. J and A's. Oh, I didn't have this up. Whoops. J and A's mini thrift halls, where we show you just a couple little secrets from our next thrift hall, which will be next week sometime. And I'll, I'll go first. Those of you who watched our thrift haul last week, you saw my ugly Hanukkah sweatshirt that's probably worth a shit ton of money. And oddly enough, this week, I find an ugly Christmas sweater t-shirt for our, for all you Doctor Who nerds. Oh, that's funny. So that's one little tease. And I also, if you saw my video right before our show went live, I talked about body modifications. This is a good book to, to find and to sell. And I can't show you most of the pictures on the air, but mm -hmm. it has cool stuff like, look, I like tattoos, but that's, that's crazy. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. So this is a good book. And we'll talk more about the book in the thrift hall. 
It's cool from our, our artistic standpoint, though. So mine, actually, and I'm going to give away a little more than I usually would because it's so ironic that you just... Uh, so this is a... Um, this looks like a... Oops. Hang on, hang on, okay. hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Oh, I, I lost the whole screen. Woo! There you go. Okay, you're up. Go. Okay, so this looks like a uh, Chanel scarf, but it is not a Chanel scarf. And I bought it for the reason of teaching about fake scarves So and what to look for. So that's the whole reason that I bought this scarf. Um, so I will be um, in the hall or maybe on an upcoming episode, I'm going to give you more information on um, why this is fake and um, what to look for. And it, this is an actual kind of decent fake and it's kind of a bad fake in some ways. So I will give you that information, but that is the whole reason I bought this, just to educate you guys about um, how to spot fake scarves. So that's really funny. And this one, I just, I showed Jason this today, this awesome dress, I'm not going to show you the label, this awesome dress, now you would think that it is Hawaiian, it's like, it's kind of a wrap dress, it actually fits me, it's a size small, but it's kind of a larger small, because I'm not really a small, um, but you would think that it is Hawaiian, due to the pattern, the flowers, but... It is actually, um, as Jason said, it's adjacent Hawaiian. It's not quite Hawaiian. <laughs> so I will. Ish. Yeah, it's Hawaiian-ish. So I will explain um, why it's Hawaiian-ish and not really Hawaiian um, in the hall. So stay tuned for that. All right. And then one little uh, tidbit of housekeeping. Nay and I have got two classes coming up in the Philly, New Jersey area. Our first class is sold out with a waiting list already. So um, our... Wednesday, April 12th class in the Philly Burbs uh, slash New Jersey. Uh, it has got a couple spots left. So if you want to learn all the stuff you see on our shows and much, much more, please sign up for the class. Hit me or Nadine up uh, or in the thrifting board or on our Thrifty Business with JNA uh, Facebook page. Has the links, but find any of us, message us. We'll get you squared away. You get three and a half hours in the thrift store. And the great thing when you have the two of us, one of us will teach you a section, and the other one has moved on to the next section. They're going to teach and kind of prepped it. They'll find the good stuff, the bad stuff, and they'll be ready to talk about it. So when I'm when I'm do when I'm prepping CDs, Nadine's and linens, and mm -hmm. then she'll hand you to me in CDs, and she'll go do women's shoes. So it's a pretty bitching class, and then we'll all go yeah. to lunch together, hang out, chit chat about the best ways to sell the stuff yeah. you found, and uh, we'd love to have you. So so a couple things. Um, First of all, you didn't tell me you were going to kill my art, but that's okay. It sold out. I had a. I know, I had a, but come on now. I had to block off the sold out date. <laughs> I don't want to advertise it no more. It's sold uh, out. But we are taking a waiting list on that class, right? Right. If, so, but yeah. I recommend taking yeah, the Wednesday, April 12th, because yeah. Northern Philly burbs to Jersey side of Philly, it's not that far. No. So. so. You might not get in if you get in the waiting list, but you'll definitely get in if you grab a spot right now. On the right now, class. yeah, act on it quickly. And, and, um, and we have. Hang on, I oh. don't want to hear you can't drive in from. P That's Pittsburgh. what I was gonna say. We are so oh. on the same page right now. Yes. Yeah, because we have someone coming to coming from Florida <laughs> and North Carolina. <laughs> so get your ass to uh, Jersey, and we'll have a good time. Plus. We're going to announce uh, other things. We're going to be doing a tiki bar hangout, mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing a uh, flea market hangout. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for all. Uh, I'll be there for a few days. So we'll, every day will be something different. So we'll put all that up very, very soon. All right, let's yeah. get our guest in here. What? Yes? Um. No, no, no. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, anything else? You, did you want to say something else about that? No, I think we're good. I think Okay, we're good. let's Just go. Fine. Let's get Stacy in okay. here. Hey, who's our guest of the week? Stacy spelled correctly, Devere. Hello. Let's, let's see if she comes back. Oh, I hear her. Yay! Hi, Stacy. What's happening, <laughs> Stacey? How you been? Good. What is going on? All right. So Stacy is here for one reason, one reason only. She's going to teach us all about purses. <laughs> <laughs> you're being, you're just hilarious tonight. I am hilarious. Look <laughs> at Nay's awesome artwork. Stacey yeah, Bruce. that. Yeah. Oh, bring that up again. Yeah, because that that was a. Uh, that was one of my uh, that was one of my fun ones. No, this yeah. this, this is what we're talking about here. So Flat first, I had Stacy. I had your name um, actually in this other spoon, and he said, "Well, you can't read that. It doesn't." So I, I switched it around a we little bit. Promote, we want to promote. I know, I know. Door. I shouldn't have said it. You're right. You were right. It was a good critique. So. Oh hey, Stacy, don't you do a blog? Did you send me a link for your blog? Um, I did not, but I can send you this afterwards. It's www. Uh, 
right brain boutique. Right, yeah, it. it was actually it's actually in our description, um, Jason. All right, I'll bring it so, up. I'll, I'll add. To yeah, it's so, actually uh, in our show description. So. All right, cool. I'll show before the end here. So Stacy's on to talk about flatware, something we have never, never talked about before. And flatware is a fancy term for silverware or really fancy for forks, spoons, and knives. So um, I attempted to buy it once, and I think I bought some goodies, and I couldn't even find them in time. They're buried in my storage unit from like nine years ago. <laughs> and where are my? Where did I just say that mine are before the show? We were talking about it. In my storage unit, I have a box of big box of flatware that I'm just I bought because I knew it was I knew it was I had an, a hunch that it was going to be good. I saw Japan and stuff on it, and it's still sitting in my storage unit because I'm just too intimidated to list it. I don't know what to do with it. So, so Stacy, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then and how you got uh, how you ended up being in uh, on our show, and and how you end up really uh, doing uh, flatware. Uh, well, I live in Chicago. And I went to school in marketing, always worked in retail. Then I went to corporate level retail for Claire's and then our corporate office for inventory management off from there. And then I had to do for my next steps. So had a garage sale, never even bought off eBay, never went on it or anything. And thought, oh, I have some good stuff left. I'll give it a try. And as most people say, after the first sale, I was hooked. Um, <laughs> I've added been about three years that I've been selling eBay, Bonanza, and Etsy to mix. And this year, I put a few things on Poshmark for jewelry, but um, no. And uh, just to kind of give another side note, uh, last year did drastically change my life. I got divorced, um, had to move in about two weeks, pack up my business and all my stuff. And um, I have suffered from anxiety my whole life. And to be honest, watching this show, Texas Gal Treasures, her videos really helped me get motivated this last year when I was having a little bit of trouble. Um, it, but whenever I'd go to estate sales, I would always go to the kitchen. And then I always saw a flatware and thought, well, it's usually cheap, so why don't I give that a try? So the next time I got a huge lot of it for really cheap, whole thing sold. I thought, well, I'll give it more try. It is tedious, I will say, up front to check patterns and kind of cook some stuff. But the end, at the end, you get a good profit, and it's easy to ship. But the up front can be a little bit more work than, like, let's say, dishes or something like that. So I was gonna. So speaking of dishes and breakables, I was gonna say, like, it's kind of like how I know tiki mugs. So I can walk up to any mugs and and instantly know good or bad, and then based on the price, yes, it is breakable but yeah same kind of way you start to know you start to like like even the book i just teased i've sold it before so the second i saw it i'm like oh that's a good book i've sold that book for a good profit before so once you start to recognize some of the normal-ish patterns that yeah now you're off and running just kind of have a gauge on how much i'll spend and i figure if if it doesn't sell, then I can mod it together, which I haven't done that yet. I have a whole stack waiting to do that. But. <laughs> All right, so let's show let's show some of your scores, and then we're going to talk about websites you use to look it up, to research it, and even a tool you use to help you uh, clean it. And so let me let me pop your scores up here because your first score is imagine that seven dinner forks. <laughs> And this score, um, it doesn't maybe seem like a huge, but I got this for twelve seventy five, and it included dinner forks, salad forks, and uh, dinner spoons, knives, and a couple other patterns. And this sold these sold for twelve seventy, or I paid twelve seventy five for the whole lot, and these sold for twenty four ninety nine with free shipping, and they sold the same day that I listed them. So some patterns sell just like that, and others will be take a while to. Sell, and but where'd you find these? Where, where were you? I was at a local thrift shop. It was a church run charity shop. And I didn't even look it up. And when I was kind of looking, I didn't see a real pattern or a name on it, but roses usually sell. So I thought, well, $12 for the whole thing. I'll take a chance on it. And, and about how many pieces were in that whole thing, Stace? Um, it equaled up to like each listing probably is two bucks. So probably I All put. Right. $2 for that listing is how much it costs. There you go. There you <laughs> go. And I, I like it. I, I like the nice fanning and the table or counter, whatever. I like the, the background too. Because I'm usually a fan of plain backgrounds, but 
kind of like the fact that it looks like it's on my cutting board in my kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. I tried different backgrounds over the time period, white and different colors. And I find that the wood, it's just a wood tabletop seems to work the best for flatware. Yeah. I, I, I think every once in a while, put it in its natural habitats better than a plain background. Not for everything, but for certain things. Hey, this isn't flatware. <laughs> This proves how you guys have always said, if you don't have to go the first day to a rummage sale or this was a rummage sale and it was fill a bag for two bucks. So it ended up, this shirt cost me seven cents and it sold for $29.99 plus days after I listed it. So not a, you know, for seven cents, it's. Oh yeah. And a uh, nice black background or did you, did you edit it? No, it's on a black background. Nice, yeah, because that this top needs it. And man, that's some sweet fringe, I gotta tell you. Yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. I'm jealous it wasn't my size. <laughs> yeah. Now, funny you should Certain funny this should be one of your scores because someone talked about it in if you were watching the chat, someone was talking about this in the chat, not the scoreboards. They're talking about Dark Tower. And for oh. those of you who don't know, Dark Tower was a game from when I was a teenager. It was kind of a a board game ripoff of Dungeons and Dragons. And if you watch Thrift Hunters, we actually found one and sold one on the show. And Stacy uh, sold a part of it. So here's her, here's what she sold. Doesn't look, if you just looked at this, it looks like, okay, score. But I had bought the game for a dollar and it's a, it has an electronic piece in it. Well, that didn't work, I pieced it out. This is the second to the last piece. And I even sold the box itself, just plain box. I made $129 profit on piecing out the game. It didn't even work, but uh, so I got this at a rummage sale and I was excited there was a box of games and I thought, oh, that kind of looks like that kind of stuff and um, that will sell and I didn't know anything about it, but it just kind of had that look what? to it. So. <laughs> yeah, and the, and, and the, <laughs> chat is, the chat is a buzz. People loved it, never heard of it, saw it on Thrift Hunters, <laughs> dug one out of the trash. I think that's like the one unifying thing is Dark Tower to all of us. That's funny. <laughs> um, I guess I should remember that from Thrift Hunters then. You don't? Yeah, Dark Tower. No, I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. We're over. The show I know. Ends I knew today. you were going to say that. Done. I'm a bad TV watcher, though. You have to give me credit <laughs> for that. So. Now, this is spectacular, and I like it on the green background, too. I have a green, uh, black, and white backdrop that I use. And this is Upsala Zebra. And oh, yeah. was a year ago. Then was going through all my kind of dead files in my backlog, and I forgot that I had another one. So I listed it. I paid $2 for this, and it listed, I think it was the same day or the next day. And now this brand, I have other Upsala patterns that I was sitting over a year, but this zebra print desirable. <laughs> yeah, that's so a, yeah, that's that looks cat. great on that green. That really, I like that. Yeah, I've been anything that's kind Where'd of you? white or pale color. The green really. That's a great tip. And and the way you took this picture, Stace, and I I haven't mentioned it enough in all the years of doing shows and Facebook groups. So when you take a picture of a cup. Don't make it so you can't see in it. Like Stacy's got it. You you want to see in the cup a little bit, especially 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 if there is a different color. So if I was doing this Boba Fett, you don't mm -hmm. want it like this. Here, I'll even put myself in the big picture here real quick. You don't want it like this. You want it like this so you can see the contrast a little bit. Yes. And then St Stacy did it really nice here. So that's just an. That, there's a bonus tip. I should have the bonus. <laughs> I tip know. I was. Up. That's yeah. There's our guest bonus tip. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to guess based on the price, this was a dud, though. Yes, <laughs> it was a big dud because I overpaid up front. I paid six dollars. It was listed since 2014, and I like you see, I got eight dollars, so my profit was sixteen cents. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, well, better but, than a loss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was not good. And this one. I thought that this would be good. I have no luck with coffee mugs, but I thought, well, this one is a box and the sticker hadn't been used yet. So surely they can sell that, but it's been listed since 2014. 
Okay. So yeah. Oh my. Yeah, mugs have just kind of tanked. The market for mugs, like I was doing really great with mugs, and the market's just kind of tanked, like especially with the Starbucks and whatnot. So. And this one, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> little, I <don't> know. <laughs> little shop at an auction, and every other piece sold within probably six months. But this one, it's new in box, uh, but it's been listed since December of 2014. And I checked my price, and it's comparable to what other ones have sold. And so I just at a loss for that one. So. <laughs> Come on, that's cute. Why isn't that selling? Yeah, that's adorable. I don't know. And little set shop, I've had a lot of luck with that. But Yeah, I mean, I, that's one thing I've never got. What's beeping? What is beeping? I'm sorry. That's my heater. I'm cold. Oh, you said it a fax? I'm like, what is beeping right now? <laughs> no, I, I apologize. I guess I should have. <laughs> no, I have a little portable <laughs> heater. I'm in the basement and I'm freezing because it's like nine degrees out. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Stacy, I want to know when you're out to dinner, um, do you do you uh, sit there at you know at restaurants and whatnot, or at your friends' houses or family, and examine their flatware? Do you? Uh, I have looked before and looked at the flatware, yes, and flip it over at the restaurants, and then I'm like, oh, this would sell actually, <laughs> but <laughs> but I don't take it, I leave it. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you ever um, do you ever stick any in your purse and hope that they? <laughs> no. <laughs> do, you, do you ever do one of these? Oh, wait, who, where'd that go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I got other friends that will be looking <laughs> and we'll get a rest, and they're like, "Oh, this is some good weight." <laughs> <laughs> like it's like we're doing drugs, but it's just flatware. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick before we go on more on the flatware, somebody wanted to know if the mug in the box was new. Other than the box beat up, was that mug new? Yes. Yeah. So Angelique, okay. it was new. All right, Stacey, so you, you've you've stolen the silverware from the restaurant or your friend's house. <laughs> and then when you get home, how do you figure out what you got for sure? Well, if I, I'm kidding. She's not stealing nothing. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> for Well, pretty much stainless, I usually end up getting at, like, savers. Or they're usually a smaller set that I get. But for silver plate, a lot of times I get it at auction, and it's just a huge box full. So my first thing is I separate it into like patterns because otherwise it's just too too much to look at. Some of the patterns can be so close that they're just one flower off. So sort it first with like patterns and then just pick up one of the patterns and then start to research that. And if yeah. you're starting out with- Hang on, hang on, because that's pretty interesting. I would never even thought that like one flower off. So it might be this pattern, but that one's got seven flowers, but this one's only got six kind of thing. Yeah, some of them are really close that you you know, have to look. And good tip, good tip. If you're starting with flatware and never bought any, I would say stainless is probably the best to kind of start with because you usually don't have to clean it. It's easier to find places and usually sells, usually quicker. But uh, silver plate usually sells the most around holidays, but I have, have sold it all through the year. And um, you want me to talk about how I research when I do have the pattern? Well, yeah, and how do you how do you know if it's stainless versus silver plate? Usually stainless will be marked either stainless or it says 1810, 188, or 180. Now Oneida, I've noticed most of those, they don't always say stainless, but the silver plate I have an example here. Um, but it usually is tarnished okay. and yep. it does if you smell it have a little bit of a musky odor to it, where stainless doesn't usually have an odor. So, so what you're saying is people will find you at the, at the garage sale, <laughs> sniffing spoons. Mm, yeah. I, I taste old, <laughs> I taste old mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you have a kind of box like at a garage sale or something and you open it up and it has that mu really, really musty smell, then it's silver plate for sure. Oh, okay. That's do All you right. do you polish those or do you? Well, hang, we'll get to the polish. Hang on, you're, okay, you're, okay. you're jumping I'm ahead. Jumping there. ahead. I, will, okay. I will slow that down. We have a great question from the chat, and since uh, I don't want to miss any of these questions, um, is there uh, all things collectible set? Is there a minimum that you would get like three forks? You'd buy one, right? Yeah, um, I try to buy just lots of them, like the baggies at Savers, or I mean, it would have to be something really great just to buy a single piece. Goodwill and Salvation Army sell theirs by the piece. And I, to be honest, I don't even really look at theirs because 
it's kind of a pain to look at by piece. So I usually try to buy lots. But like, like with my tiki mugs, like if you see something you've sold recently, you're like, oh, that sells for like 50 bucks a spoon and there's one spoon. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like bamboo, this is kind of like bamboo patterns sell really well. Just in a maker. So if I saw a bamboo spoon, then I'd go ahead and buy it. All right. So you've got, uh, you sent us a couple of websites you use to help you find the pattern. So let me bring that screen up so you can see it here. So this first one is uh, antiquecupboard.com. And I use slash a bunch of stuff. I'll, I'll post all this for you guys to, to see because there's too much to tell you. <laughs> yeah, this one I use both websites I usually only use for silver plate because I have a book which I'll show for sterling or for stainless. Um, but these I find much easier than replacements. Replacements I only go to to find keywords because it's too hard to find the patterns. But these two websites you can search by maker. So it makes oh, sense. okay. Maybe scroll down until you find your pattern. So based on the fact that all pictures on a red background, someone built this website by themselves, I take it. Oh. And they had every one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't know. You know, because I go to a Tiki Mug website that's kind of like this, but it's based on user input. So every background's different. But this is like every background's on this red. Hmm. Or. or yeah. Nadine, they, you, have a, you have an alternative theory? Oh, that, yes, um, that's that's easy to do um, with um, uh, with a, a software product called Photoshop. So, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny girl, <laughs> very easy to uh, to put anything on any background. So, all right. So, uh, real, this is a great question from George. Thanks, George. What is there? Does anything sell better more than others? Knives, forks, spoons, or specialty pieces? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that. Forks are going to be your number one seller, and usually dinner forks, followed by the salad forks. Then spoons, which is usually reversed for the spoons. It's teaspoons, and then the dinner spoons. And then your knives are your slowest selling. They take forever, generally speaking. And then the serving pieces and that is usually pretty in line with the knives. They're a slower seller. Is, is there a specialty piece that's always like, oh, those sell like that? Like a specific, like like a, a gravy ladle or a... No, not really. <laughs> just the... All right. I just wondered. Yeah. Uh, and then the other website you sent me for a silver plate is um, sterlingflatwarefashions.com slash SPP patterns and then some other crap. And I'll, I'll post it in the group. And some yeah. other crap. the best. It just seems like it's easier, the easiest to find the pattern. If you just look for your man or your maker name and then just scroll through the yeah. picture. Yeah, I don't feel so bad about, I, I don't feel as intimidated now about going through my box of flatware that's somewhere buried deep in the uh, caverns of my storage unit. So <laughs> I don't feel so bad about going through that now because I feel like I can probably look and figure out what maker it is and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because usually they'll always have the maker mark on the back. You can tell. So, so and now I would say like Oneida and Roger Brothers. Oneida a lot of times is Roger Brothers, and Roger Brothers has like 1847 Rogers and Rogers and Son. And but they're on the website, you can find it. So. Okay. But they have a lot of different makers <laughs> under that one umbrella. So Suzanne has a great question. Thank you, Suzanne. Would you buy monogrammed silverware or not? I wouldn't, I have bought it and it, only if it's in a lot, but if I just saw the monograms, I would not, I would pass on it. Yeah. So you have to find, you have to have someone with that combination of yeah. initials to, yeah. yeah. So that's a hard sell, I would imagine. <laughs> got it. And, and I got, I got just imagined in 2017, that just ain't a thing really anymore. You know, right. maybe in the upper crust echelon of people, mm -hmm. but it just, you know, you know, all our grandparents had these china cabinets with a china and the fancy silver. We just don't do that anymore. For yeah. The most part. yeah. So, do people actually do people just collect the monograms just for um, their um, just for their collectability, or is that something that they're going to look for those specific letters for sure? Um, they might look for the specific letters if you have it monogrammed. I would definitely put that in the title. What it okay. is. Sometimes, if I have room, I put no mono so that people know it's oh, okay. Monogrammed. But if you do have the letter, put it in the title. Okay. Uh, all things collectible is a great question. Does it yeah. matter a lot where it's from? So are are some countries more desirable than others? 
some countries are, let's see, I have my little notes here. Um, uh, I guess some of mine says Japan on it. That's why, that's why I bought the box at Goodwill in the first place. It's yeah. Which yeah. Japan is good in like Norway, Denmark, okay. uh, Italy, Germany, France. Those are desirable. Mm -hmm. Certainly the U S you would think that it would be, but it's kind of a hit or miss. Um, but yeah, India, Sweden, pretty much any of the European countries are good to put in there. Okay. I think that's a good general, like even when I'm t telling people about sports coats and other things too. Yeah, I was thinking things shoes. Things made in European countries and Japan, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's uh, not known for mass producing easily breakable crap. So when you see those countries, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, it should make you pause on most every product. Like yes. you see Denmark, Japan, Sweden, like Italy, I'll, I'll definitely pause. I'm like, okay, I don't know anything about flower, but I'll look this bitch up right now. I'll get my phone out. I'll see what I can figure out. I'll call Stacy. Hey, Stacy, here's a picture. You know, like like I said, your friends. Now, now I know my friend does flatware. Guess guess who's getting the call next time I'm in Savers? <laughs> All right. So uh, tell us about um, silver plate. So it's not real silver. Right. It just kind of has. It's kind of like jewelry. How it can be, you know, silver plate, just a layer of silver over it. Um, a lot of times, it is tarnished. It'll you can see it like this. Yeah, and I just kind of brought some examples to show this is how a lot of them come. And this is after I polished one and cleaned one. So, I have, yeah, I have sold them not quite this bad, but I have sold them not clean and they still sell. But I think it looks better. And you can find some mistakes or some errors, I should say, flaws when you do clean them. Like this spoon, I thought, oh, this is a, you know, a great spoon. But when I started cleaning it, um, I don't know if you can see, but it's missing. Some of the silver plate has started to rub oh, off. I see it, yeah. I was going to ask if that happens, yeah. So. so This I probably won't because in the front of it, it's kind of pitted a little bit more. Okay. So polishing is a good thing because that, that also um, and there's out the flaws. Where I polished it and then I see more details than I originally saw. Okay, so that's so a good thing. First, I didn't really polish, but now I'm kind of getting more into polishing it just because I find... For me, I think it looks better, and you can find out more about the piece. So, Nadine, now you can ask your question. Um, yes. Do, so, obviously, we just answered it. So, you do you do normally polish them. Now, is there um, – now, these are – you, you talked about stainless and silver plated. Is there such a thing as um, solid silver or – And that will usually be marked um, 925 or I have a lion hallmark on it. And I haven't, I've come across a couple pieces, but not too much, but. So that's like the holy grail, I would assume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did, when I listed that, I did measure it to figure out how many grams because people, I didn't have it in the title at first and people did ask me how many grams it was. Okay. So I was hoping you'd lead us down the path. Hey, hey, Stacy, how do you, what do you use to polish it? That's why I was oh, hoping well. you'd lead us. So <laughs> I'll do it. Hey, All Stacey, right. what do you use? Oh, hey, right, silver green polish. Well, <laughs> I have to found that it's easy to use. It comes with a sponge that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And um, you just, you want, it's just kind of like a paste that you just put on the sponge and then put on your flatware. But I will say wear rubber gloves because it does, even the rubber glove. It's it going to discolor your hands, correct? Yeah. So you just put that on and then rinse it right away. And mm -hmm. if it's too bad, it doesn't take too much elbow grease. But like the spoon before, it would, Take a little bit of bell grease, but generally you can get it pretty sparkling with the cleaning. And, and I tried based on those prices, <laughs> stuff doesn't cost all that much, so it's not like you're investing yeah. a huge amount. Mm -hmm. I tried a couple other brands, and I felt like you had to scrub more with the other ones, but this one just seems to go on to So I would assume an eight ounce tub of that stuff does a lot of silverware, correct? Yeah. yeah. I this is my second one, and all the I pretty much started selling flatware probably. The second year in so in a couple of years i'm just now on my second oh wow however if you notice two tubs can, you can get for 11.39 one tub for 860 so if you got a friend near you who will do it too go have these on 11.39 you both get a much better deal yeah true. much better deal and i have no i have no skin in that game i'm just telling you <laughs> reading my screen yeah i was just going to ask did you want to go halves on uh, some silver polish yeah right? Now, uh, I, I do have a friend who does it, like, really uh, a crazy amount, and I think he's got, like, a machine. Oh. Are you going to get to that level? I don't know about that, but it is kind of – it's 
does take a lot of work to clean. I have to do it in spurts and be like, okay, I have a bunch researched. I'm going to do, you know, four or five different patterns and then take a break. And, um, oh. Someone wants to know if you've ever found a spork. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of different types out there, and it's amazing. It makes you think, man, back in the day, they probably, all they yeah. did was silver. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't show the other guides. Let me pop back to that. This is the other guide that you uh, recommend. Yeah. Um, uh, and be, uh, when when Stacy sent me this, I, I noticed some people are trying to sell the exact same guide for forty or for nineteen. Yeah, Make I sure can't. you're buying this. Buy it for nineteen, not forty. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty easy. This is sterling or sorry, stainless, and it's by replacements. And again, it's you find your maker, and then you just I usually just hold the piece up. Hold the piece up. See, that's pretty bitching. Oh, okay. So it's actual really size. Easy. So. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're just starting out and you're not sure if you're going to like flatware, maybe, you know, just try to Google image or put in the group, you know, for the pattern name. But if you find you like it, like, I love this book and I'd be lost without it. If you're going to do flatware, you have to have the book. <laughs> All right. So there you go. There's her really hardcore tip. If you're going to do flatware, <laughs> get that book. Yes. <laughs> get that book. Um, Shoot, what was I just gonna say? All right, well let's uh, let's show your shipping here because you wanted to demonstrate mm, uh, yeah. shipping. So here's here's four forks. Yeah, and um, what I usually do, I well, I'll use a spoon's example. So um, you know, I take the one spoon, put it in paper, and then just wrap it over. Put the other spoon in, wrap it. Put the other spoon on top and wrap it. And I usually will if there is a Set of eight that sold i'll do four at a time and then put them next to each other that way it's not too bulky and then after i get that done i roll them in corrugated cardboard which i'll give a shout out to bubble fast because i never thought of it before and i ordered boxes from them and it came in the corrugated wrapped in the box and i was like oh i might as well use it for something and now i love it <laughs> and then there you um, go. yeah i have a thank you card with my information or a business card, depending on the weight that I put in there. And if it's over a pound, it goes padded flat rate. And if it's under, it goes in a poly mailer. And I've had really good feedback. I used to try to make it with a cardboard box, kind of just wrap the cardboard around it. This is much easier and people have good feedback on it. So. Yeah, keep it in mind, it doesn't break that easily. So if you've got them stacked on top of each other with the paper, separate them and then the corrugated it's nice and solid you're you're not sending a light bulb you're sending yeah but i would there. imagine if there's a heavyweight box or something it could get scratched or dented or you know crushed so it's yeah. take down the edges of the roll so that there's no sharp points that's a good point too yeah oh yeah somebody did ask so if you sh if you send sharp knives you do something different to ensure that mm -hmm. no one gets cut along the way good question i kind of I, I bubbled the, I wrap them the same way, but then I put, before I roll them in the cor corrugated cardboard, I wrap them in a bubble wrap first. That way when they open it, it's not just the paper. Yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm still, uh, this is going to sound odd coming out of my mouth, but I'm still afraid. <laughs> not that, you know, because I, I, I get in that section and I'm looking and I have this fear of I'm going to buy a bunch of crap, but that's why Nana do our duds every week. You learn from your crap. All right, Jason, I'm going to challenge you. Uh oh. Anything you do buy? <laughs> so, so we're both going to dig out that flatware in our storage units, and in the next couple of weeks, we're going to list some pieces and see who can sell first and who can sell for the most. What do you say? I like it. What were we going to say, Stacy? Oh, that I usually, ninety nine percent of the time, I list. A set of like four to six dinner forks or four to six salad forks or separate them out but even if you do find a dud that you know you get home I bought some plastic handle ones which I try to stay away from but I ended up buying them at home and they were kind of flimsy but I just lotted them together in a big huge you know 64 pieces of the silverware oh. and it's still full so I mean even if you do end up buying a dud you just can lot it together all right, so I'm, I'm glad you said that. It wasn't even, wasn't even thought in my mind, but how, yeah, all right, so plastic handled. Yeah, I wouldn't buy anything modern, but if you find some kitschy 60s, mid-century modern stuff, do you buy that? Yeah, there's um, Echo, I guess how you say it, or Echo, the new Buffin is the name. 
and it's got a brown handle, that stuff, mm -hmm. no matter what, I don't even look it up. I just buy it because that will stop. <laughs> I still right. Let me ask you, I showed this in the hall, in my last um, haul, but I have this fondue fork set. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now these have both um, like this. They have they're obviously vintage, and I think they're seventies. Those they have both the wood in, and then the they're this actually, and then the plastic handles. So yeah. um, so is this is is this some this was a good purchase? I hope. <laughs> yeah, uh, fondue for a little like expensive colors. Mm -hmm. Some of them metal. So I think if you put mid in there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. That's the wood seems like desirable. Okay. So what's next? Uh, what's next on your agenda, Stacy? Doing anything exciting coming up? Uh, you going to? Is there like a fork convention? <laughs> fork uh, <like> convention. Can <laughs> <laughs> um, I get back on listing? I kind of when I moved uh, this year, I had focused. I had a huge death pile of clothes. And because when I was married, I had an assistant that helped me out, and but he didn't do clothes. So I had probably two years worth of backlog of clothes. So this year I've just been focusing so far on clothing. But now that that's manageable, I'm just getting back all my flatware back out. And this kind of show kind of rejuvenated me to just do it, list it, get it done. So. <laughs> Oh, that's what I was going to say. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I was going to say something earlier. I'm like, oh, I'm getting older. Lose things out of my brain. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, for those of you uh, on my secret beach, my next uh, my next webinar, which will be about a week, is about hiring an assistant. So, Stacy, I'm glad you said that. So, you're polishing these uh, these uh, silver plated items. Would you hire? You know, that's kind of like dummy work, yeah. for lack of a better term. Would you hire a local kid to like here polish these fifty things for me? Yeah, it would be easy to you know show somebody how to do it, and I don't think you could screw it up too much. So. <laughs> All right, yeah, and, see, and that's a good use of a of an assistant or even like a local kid because once yeah. you show them how to clean one, that, that right. work you should be doing. Your skill is yeah. finding it and selling it. Yeah. You don't need to be cleaning it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Cindy Roach was asking, have you ever bought or knew anything about gold-plated silverware? I have um, got a couple pieces of that, and it did, it did – well, I had two big lots. One of them sold right away, and one of them I've had for over a year. So wow. I don't have a lot of experience with the gold plated, but um, it seems like a slower seller, from what I can tell. Mm. But and and with the flatware, like it will sell all year round. But of course, at the holiday time, it's definitely the peak. It's called gold electroplate. Yeah. So yeah, so gold plating is you know it's not everyone's cup of tea. Silverware is way more everyone's cup of tea. Right. So, yeah, it's one of those things where you got to wait for the right buyer. I'm sure of that. Yeah, and it seemed like the more ornate patterns in that did better than just the um, simple art one. Okay. So Mary, Mary did say Asians love the gold uh, gold plated stuff. So you know. <laughs> If you find if you find a, a section of people, no matter you know what they are, that that uh, like something specific, that definitely market to them. Oh. Yeah, and All if right. anybody has any questions, feel free. I'll try to you know on the board answer them. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank All you right, so cool. much. This has been really educational. I, yeah. I feel like I can. Yeah, and, and talk about something that's just really foreign to me, though I've tried. This was awesome because I'm gonna go buy that that book and at least give myself a, you know hey. I get it. I, I've got at, at my ready, I got my tiki books when I need to reference something real quick. So I get it. So you should have your tools. And yeah. yes, old school books, actual <laughs> books are good old school tools to have. <laughs> yep. Yeah, get better than, than looking online. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I want to thank Stacy. That was an awesome yeah. guest. Yes. Thank you so much. You rocked <laughs> it. You killed it. Uh, you are awesome, girl. I love you. Uh, next week, uh, uh, it'll be episode one, season four. We got a little change Yay. for you next week. We're doing something a little new, so stay tuned for that. And Nadine, real quick, uh, talk about our guest next week, and then we'll get out okay. of here. So our guest is going to be Daryl Riley, who is a member of uh, the Thrifting Board and a viewer, and he is going to talk about glass. Uh, we've had some people ask about both flatware and glass, so. Stacy knows about flatware, and we found out Daryl. Daryl knows a lot about glass, so he's going to talk about all things art glass and, um, you know, just glassware and everything glass. So, 
That's oh, as you can see, like, look, you guys have been asking for things. Boom, we mm -hmm. bring them right away. So if you've got something specific, especially if multiple uh, viewers say, I want to learn about flatware, I learn about yeah. class, whatever yeah, it those is, requests, so. vintage jock straps, whatever it oh. is, <laughs> we'll find an expert. So I challenge you to know. find an expert in vintage <laughs> jock straps. Oh, I, I can. I got a lot of friends in San Francisco. I guarantee you I can find someone. Oh, boy. Let's I not do that episode, you. though. So do me a favor. Uh, click like down here. Subscribe right down here if you don't subscribe already. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be back next Thursday at normal yeah. time. We'll be doing day. another haul, but I don't think this weekend because you have a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the haul very soon because I got a bunch of cool stuff mm -hmm. this past week. Uh, but if you're in Vegas, beside, um, if you're coming to Vegas for ASD, Throwing a party on Tuesday night at Frankie's Tiki Room, 6 p.m. till whenever. And I speak at ASD at 2.45 Sunday. Sunday, 2.45. Uh, speaking about assistants, virtual assistants are great. But what happens when your dog has to pee? Who takes them out? So that's going to be my topic. I worked the word pee into my title. It's official in the program. Yes, I like to push the envelope. You are proud of that. I am very proud of that. They let me put the word pee in my title, so... <laughs> eBay would never allow that. Thank you, ASD. <laughs> thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Nadine. And thank you, everyone who watched live. And thank you, everyone who tunes in after the fact. We'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Yes, thank bye. you.